Uh, speaking of kids, I went to my class reunion recently. Yeah, I was on the committee. I was in charge of the invitations, so there weren't any cheerleaders there this year. <laughs> Well, my leap into comedy wasn't really a leap. It was sort of a long, drawn-out series of starts and stops. But I think my biggest push was when I got in the Jay Leno Comedy Challenge back in the early 1990s. They held these local contests around the country, and then the winners were going to compete nationally, and then somebody was going to go on to the show. Now, to get into my local contest in Virginia, I had to send in a five-minute tape of my comedy that was postmarked by the Friday after Thanksgiving. Now, I didn't have any jokes, and I uh, didn't have any way to record them, uh, but I was naive. And I figured, hey, Thanksgiving's in a couple days. My family is funny. I'll just make some notes and write some jokes about them. And then I can borrow my dad's mini cassette recorder and record them. So Thanksgiving rolls around, and uh, nothing really happened. Uh, There was no burnt dinner or crazy relatives or anything. So the only thing I scored really was a tape recorder. I was kind of nervous asking my dad about it because I really didn't want anyone to know that I wanted to be a comedian. But I went ahead and asked him, and of course the first thing he says is, what do you need it for? I said, well, I want to enter this comedy contest. Luckily, my sister-in-law, Robin, was sitting next to me, and she said, oh, well, you're naturally funny. You'll probably do really well. So I was kind of relieved with that, but my dad probably still thought it was just another one of Jan's crazy ideas. So I woke up early the next morning, and uh, I didn't have anything to write jokes about, So I thought, eh, forget the contest, I'm going back to bed. Then a weird thing happened. I had a drawer full of alarm clocks that I'd gotten at all these different trade shows, but I'd never used them. Right after I rolled over, all the alarm clocks went off at once. By the time I got them turned off, I was wide awake, so I decided to write some jokes. I recorded them by walking around my condo, reading them into a tape recorder. It didn't even occur to me that everyone else in the contest would be sending in a video of a live show. I sent in a mini cassette audio tape. As I dropped it off at the mail that day, I do remember feeling that something is going to happen. And it did. The next week, I got a call by the local TV station telling me that I was selected as one of the 25 comics for the live local competition. I was floored. I said, how many people entered this thing? Two? She just laughed and said, it was like 100 people, and we thought you were really funny. They held three nights of competitions with eight comics per night, and I was on the third night. The first night, I was watching the 11 o'clock news, and Arch Campbell, who's a local TV personality, and he reported that, quote, professional comedians are vying for a shot on The Tonight Show. I just sat straight up in bed. I was like, professional comedians? It was the first time I realized that I was probably the only one in this contest who had never been on stage. So I started pacing and practicing. Yeah, yeah. Now, the only time I'd been on stage actually was 10 years earlier, and the only thing I remembered was that the lights were really bright. So I practiced with a light shining in my face. On the night of the contest, the comics got together to decide the order. I didn't want to go first, so I blurted out, well, I'll go fourth. All the comics stared at me, and the guy organizing it said, uh, we draw numbers. I was totally embarrassed. Of course, otherwise, who else would go first, right? So I got number five, and I looked like an idiot. I popped in and out of the room during the show because I didn't want to psych myself out. All I kept thinking was, just don't bomb. I got a little bit of confidence because I saw one professional comedian struggle. And I thought, okay, I think I can be funnier than him. And I was. I had a pretty good set with some stuff hitting and some stuff not, but I was happy. I didn't win, but after the show, my friend Cheryl had brought a group, even though I told her not to, but I'm happy she did. And a random woman from the audience all came up to me and said, I was funny and I should try this again. Also, the next day at work, my friend Evelyn casually mentioned that she saw my name in the newspaper. She thought I knew, but I had, like, no idea. There was an article about the competition that mentioned me and one of my jokes as an example of the good but inconsistent acts. I doubt many people saw the article, though, because I called my mom, and she went and bought up, like, all the newspapers. Now, you'd think I would have gotten on stage the next week and began my comedy career, right? Nope. There's more. But that's it for this episode. The takeaway from this is being naive is good for you. Don't overthink things. Thanks for listening. This is Jan. Take care and enjoy your journey.